Welcome back to another experiment with the Hidden Harvest Grow Light, that's this light right here, versus the Sansi. Uh, in a previous video series, which was a three-part series, I grew pepper plants to see if there's any differences in growth between these two lights. If you haven't seen that video series, you can click the link here or at the end of the video. In this video, it's actually gonna be pretty short. We're actually just gonna be testing elongation or reaching. And to do that, we're just growing some, or sprouting some watermelon seeds, and this is a petite yellow variety. And we're gonna be taking these sprouts and going into another video with them, which I'll talk about a little bit later here. But there's five seeds per Rockwell cube in each side. And the lights are just on right now just to kind of demonstrate. These aren't gonna be on until they actually to start to sprout. They're gonna be in darkness for a little bit. Uh, so basically the uh, claim is that there's, you know, there's no reaching with the Hidden Harvest Grow Light when you're so far away from the plants. But what we're doing here is we're hanging this light at the suggested height from the website, which is actually 18 inches for seedlings. And right now it is exactly 18 inches from the tops of these cubes. And using my uh, Apogee MQ500 PAR meter, I've made sure that the PAR levels match both sides. So there's 118 micromole at this uh, at the top of these cubes and 118 micromole at the tops of these cubes here under the Sansi light. And obviously you see the Sansi is a little bit higher. Two reasons for that. That's because this is higher, a little higher wattage and it has uh, lenses on them. So where the Hidden Harvest uh, is a lower wattage and doesn't have lenses, so that's why there's height difference, but the PAR levels are the same. So basically we're just testing spectrum to see if there's any uh, suppression of vertical growth with one light versus the other. Because this light here is just a standard white LED, there's no uh, variations in the color temperature versus the Hidden Harvest. You can clearly see there's different color temperature uh, LEDs in there. So we're gonna go ahead and cover this up with the plastic top and put it in the darkness for a little bit until they start to sprout. And then in that case, right as they are starting to sprout, this cover is gonna come off, the lights are gonna go on, and we're gonna see if there's any differences in elongation. So just a quick tip here. If you're ever trying to sprout larger seeds and rock wool cubes, I find uh, that if you put the seeds on top and don't shove them down inside of it, uh, I usually get better germination rate because I think the pressure holding the seeds close with the larger seeds, um, it doesn't allow them to sprout as easy, uh, in my experience anyway. So any larger seeds, if you're growing something like beans or peas, uh, or any larger seeds like a watermelon seed, just put them on top and there's no reason to bury them down inside the cube itself, just as long as they stay moist. Okay, so it is about four days later now and we have germination. Now at this point, they would actually still be under the soil uh, so I've been waiting to turn the lights on. I just I just now turned them on and they're gonna go on their cycle from now on. But you can see here I got 100% germination. Uh, every single seed that I put on top of the rock cool cubes has germinated. Um, these are actually seeds that I took uh, from a watermelon I grew in my garden last year. And um, I just put them in a Ziploc bag. Uh, I dried them out for about a week and then I put them in a Ziploc bag and put them in the fridge and that's where they've been ever since. That's typically how I store my seeds anyways. So you can see here, uh, at this point, like I said, they'd still be under the soil if they were actually in the soil. But uh, the reason why I waited to, to, turn, to uh, turn the lights on is because um, normally at this point, they would still be under the soil. They wouldn't be pushing out. But you can see here, you see like this one here, how that the leaves are trying to push out of the pod and then open up. So at that point, is right before they would start to emerge from the soil. So I wanted to turn the lights on, but I didn't want to do it too soon. Kind of want to ruin the roots that they were sending out. But we're going to go ahead and cut the video here and come back and uh, see what happens. Okay, so it's about two days later now, and I wanted to make a quick update here. Here on the Hidden Harvest side, you can see we got plenty of reaching going on. Now, normally when I'd be sprouting watermelons, I'd want them to be about half this height. So they're about two inches. You can see, here's my finger there. That's about the height of them. And over on the Sansi side, pretty much the same thing, the same height. Some of these on the, on the one back here have not really sprouted completely upwards yet, but this is where we're at. I wanted to just kind of shoot this before they fall over if they reach any more. So that's it for this update. We'll come back and take a look in a, maybe another day or two. Okay, it is about two days later now, and I've let these grow a little bit more. And so far they've done nothing but uh, a lot more reaching. A lot more stretching and this is not how I want my seed lengths to be. But anyways, I got my PAR meter set up here. You can see I got my sensor sitting right at about the top of where these uh, seedling heads are. 
And there you're looking at the power meter, that's about 133 micromole. And then now we'll come over to the hidden harvest side, you can see here. I'll put it right up at the top there. Oops, sorry, the power meter turned off there, I had to turn it back on. So it's sitting right there at the top of the canopy. Well, not really the canopy. And we're got about 132-ish. If I move it up just a hair, see it's 134. That was barely anything, that was this much. See that movement? That's how much it changes. So you can see here that neither side really performed very, very well to suppress uh, vertical growth. And that has really nothing to do with the lights or the spectrum themselves. That has to do with the amount of power that it is receiving. So you can see really that the hidden harvest light, even though it's got this uh, tuned spectrum white light with uh, different colors, it hasn't really made any dif difference as far as suppressing vertical growth, um, at least in the uh, seedling stage. All right, so it's a few days later now, and what I've actually done is basically restarted this experiment, and you can kind of see I got uh, one rock wool cube in each side here, and I've actually got the same amount of seeds on top of each one, basically doing the exact same thing. There's a heat mat, and I got a cover on here to keep the humidity up there while they germinate. Um, the lights are just on for the video purposes. They're actually in the dark for a few days here. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to be showing you how much light it does take to keep the seedlings at an appropriate height, meaning that so they don't uh, elongate or stretch towards the light. Because the with watermelon seeds, it's not really a big deal if they elongate the way that they were because it's a vining plant, it's going to be on the ground anyways. But if you were growing something that's a, an upward growing plant, you know, like a pepper plant, even tomato plants, um, basically anything that grows upwards, if you have a seedling that reaches like that and that uh, and it starts out like that, you're going to have a very weak stem. You don't want to start seedlings out that way. And obviously I'm talking to the people who are kind of maybe new to the hobby. If, if you're already in this, you already know what you're doing. But um, I want to show you how much light it actually takes to uh, suppress them and it's not so much to do with spectrum it has to do with the lighting intensity so normally when I sprout seedlings uh, I usually go with about 300 micromole to start and we're going to be lowering these lights down to achieve that on each side and we'll come back when they're starting to sprout okay so it is about a week later about seven eight days actually and these have actually sprouted a, a couple days ago and I just kind of let them grow and open up and uh, reach as much as they will reach and you can see here the lights are a lot closer than they were before and you know, that's what it took to actually get an adequate amount of light to the tops of the plants and you can see this one here the hidden harvest side it's i mean it's about a hand width away just for some perspective there but that's kind of what it takes about 300 micromole or so uh is about where you'd want to be for most seedlings and not every seedling not every plant needs that much light in particular but that's a pretty good general uh, area to start from so if i take my uh power meter here. Let me go ahead and turn it on. Put it over here on the Sansi side. And you can see here it is about 311 micromole, 310. And go over to the Hidden Harvest side. And we're about the same, about 311, 312. I mean, that's about as close as you can possibly get uh, is to do a fair comparison with these lights. And let me show you why. Because if you notice here, the Sansi side plant seedling is a little bit taller than the hidden harvest side. So if I put my sensor right here, right at the top, right there, I know it looks like it's higher. That's just that's just an illusion there. You can see if I go down there. So we're looking at about 360, we'll just call it 360 micromole for the Sansi side. Now if I move it over to this side, the hidden harvest, if I put it right there, right at the top of it, uh, 322 micromole. So you can see as of right now, this side's actually getting a little bit stronger light. Uh, it's not a whole lot, but it's, it's a little bit stronger versus that side, but yet that is actually doing less reaching. Now I know this particular sample size is small because it's only one seedling per, but you can see there, that's a little bit taller, about a quarter to a half inch taller. And that tells me this is enough to actually warrant another experiment with this. Uh, and I, what I mean by another experiment, I mean by basically growing a larger sample size of small plants, um, maybe microgreens or something like that, where you can really, we can really see by numbers if it's really doing uh, much of a difference. 
as far as the spectrum goes on the hidden harvest light. Um, as of right now, you can't really call this a confirmation or anything. I was basically just showing you kind of what it takes or how much light it actually takes to suppress that reaching versus what we did originally. Now, in the uh, previous series I talked about where I grew the pepper plants in a three-part series, um, you know, if I compare the node spacing on those both of those plants versus one light versus the other, there was no difference in node spacing. I'm just basically looking at the seedling stage of, or of uh, the plants or any just kind of small plants. So we can really see if there's actually um, suppressing vertical growth, at least in the beginning stages. So that's going to be an experiment coming up probably in the future here. Uh, right now we're going to be taking these particular seedlings and moving them over to the uh, other grow tent where I got my Mars Hydro SP3000 set up. We're going to grow some watermelons indoors since I had a very terrible summer, the worst yet growing uh, watermelons outdoors. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.